Extra and, high. Yeah, and <laughs> angelic. Y'all know what it is. You saw the title. It's another what if up in here. And we are joined by a very special guest. A very special guest and a uh, little brother, but not little in size, but only because of age. <laughs> <laughs> to a previous guest. I think he is one inch taller than me. Bro, one inch? I feel like you taller than Minimum. Uh, there's no chance. You're pretty tall, no man. shot. How, how tall are you? Six foot? <laughs> no, 5'10". Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> you just look tall. I think I'm 5'10". We need to do yeah, a back Yeah, we're roughly I thought you were a little shorter than me, though. Like oh, yesterday. You guys could shoot your clothes. We could. <laughs> we could. We probably could. Yeah, yeah, back to back. <laughs> this is Lee Smith, everybody. Hello, it's hey. me, Lee Smith. Y'all have heard of me before at least a couple times. Yeah. He, he, Evangelion yeah. reference in yep. like episode 11 or something. We've definitely Warren been. Smith. Uh-huh. And he, you're all up in the Discord, too. Yeah. This is obviously Ryan's cousin and uh, my good buddy. Good buddy. Yeah, and I live super close to you now, so we can play lots of board games. It's going to be lit. But and today, we hitting them jars, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we hitting them jars. We, we blasted out a couple days ago, and we wanted a ton of fresh, brand new submissions. Might be a couple old ones mixed in here, but y'all know how this goes. We're going to draw from these jars, you guys' submissions. Uh, for what if questions, and we're just gonna spit. You know what I'm saying? Let's hand it to Lee for the first one. We'll just go this way. Do we want to start with a Patreon, Patreon jar? Yeah, okay. we'll just alter. Yeah. Well, I'm the a Omis. patron, and I did put in a what if. That's right. Okay, well, let's start with that one. Is it in the and jar? It's in his head. No, no, I had it on tap. I tried to, uh, I tried to put it in, and it got buried. I, all good. <laughs> real, real quick for everybody out there curious, we have a Discord yep. that you access through our Patreon, patreoncom slash said so. And look at this. We have a special pretty jar that all of our uh, submissions from that exclusive Discord go into. So uh, wait a minute, let's let's just go into this really quick. We did actually just uh, have a breakthrough discovery last night that we are very soon going to be introducing a new segment mm. to the show where we're going to be doing like a deeper dive into the spiritual sciences. Yes. So in addition mm. to doing regular what if series, we want to get into like a spirit science series. So. So yeah. So keep your eye out for that. Uh, it's going to be spirit science every, oh, yeah. every few episodes. It, it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. Do you remember the submission that you, Oh yeah, oh, you do. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that one. I mean, it's, I don't know. Oh. I, I thought it was fun because you're not super keen on the disclosure currently running through, especially the, like the exotic materials. Mm. But my what if was what if the exotic materials were the ones that your dad touched and lost like his vision and it had a profound electronic resonation with him? What if it was actually the materials they were? Like that's the, the, the uh, what are they? Quasi crystals. Yes. Yeah. Well, what if were. it was that? They were that. That those the, like. The the exotic meta materials that they have are exactly the same. I mean, they have more. Yeah, you know, yeah. But that's what we touched in the story. You know. It's, okay. Okay. And remind me again. I don't remember exactly what the quasi crystal is supposed to be. Is it some sort of like physical manifestation of energy from from like a higher realm? Or Let's just look it up. Yeah. I mean, you also did describe like. You had said that you've seen things drip physically off of orbs. My, so. I hadn't seen that. My dad. Oh, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, that kind of, you know, what if? A quasi-crystal <laughs> or a quasi-periodic crystal is a structure that is ordered but not periodic. It can continuously fill all available space, but it lacks translational symmetry. While crystals, according to classic crystallographic restriction theorem, can only possess two, three, four, and six-fold rotational symmetries, the Bragg diffraction, whatever that means, dude. Am I right? Liberty like, diffraction. Am I right? I've never heard of that. The Bragg diffraction pattern of quasi crystals shows sharp peaks with other symmetry orders. For ex for instance, fivefold. Um, and this is just Wikipedia. I mean, right, I don't right. I don't know exactly. They're they're not normal crystalline structures. Yeah, sure. It was the theory that they were some kind of physical manifestation from another realm, though, or something along those lines. I mean, that's what I think. Like, sure. like maybe it's like a breadcrumb. You can see the pictures here of quasi crystals. They have these insane, whoa, what? like at the molecular <laughs> level, you know, sacred and, geometry. Yeah, pretty much. That's wild. Very, whoa. very. This just looks like bizarre. how, um, like you'll see people depict the fourth dimension in like two D fields. You know what I mean? It, it quasi, just looks like that. I just found. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I just, just found an article on nature.com. <clears throat> quasi crystals: the thrill of the chase. Uh, Sharon Glotzer, shout out Sharon, whoever you are, <laughs> enjoys a riveting tale of daring 
do in material science. Second kind of impossible, the extraordinary quest for a new form of matter. So quasi crystals are not normal. They're yeah. a very rare formation mm -hmm. in nature. Very, mm -hmm. very special. And um, I mean, you guys can look more into it later, but yeah, it was it was explained to us that the metamaterials that we were handling were quasi crystalline in structure. Yeah. And they kind of insinuated that it had like awakening like properties when you come in co into mm -hmm. contact with it. It was like watch your dreams, be aware of, you know, a shift in perspective and things like that. And he was like he being Tim, you know, Tim Taylor, mm -hmm. he was like, you know, the fact that your bodies had this reaction is proof to us that you guys have come face to face with some sort of interdimensional entity. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I hope that answers the question. Right. Cause when he touched it, it was like a vibration. Yeah. Like he yeah. visibly, like well, he I touched it. It was briefly. my wow. dad did. I just yeah. felt like electricity <clears throat> move through my body. It wasn't harmful. Didn't Jenny also, she didn't feel it. Mm. Okay. She okay. held them. She didn't feel anything. Okay. Because I think at that That's point she hadn't had any sample. like face to face. Encounter. We'd only been together for like two months. Right. Yeah. She right. hadn't experienced anything for like two years. It took two years in our relationship. It would be really. Did she touch them later and also experience? No. Y'all haven't touched them again, have you? Mm -mm. Okay. So that would be interesting to see mm. if she touched. <laughs> if that them was now. something y'all could get back into contact with. Yeah. Yeah, that That'd would be cool. Be cool. So I love that question. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Thank it's you. a cool okay, question. Okay, so we're, we're going to count that one as a Patreon. One. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Patreon since yeah. day one. Right. Fair. I appreciate hey, that. The day one. Day one. All right, so let's pull from the regular schmegular what if jar. You want to do the honors? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, draw it out of there. So for, the, for future reference, if you guys want to submit one of these what if prompts for us to discuss, um, best place to do that is probably where, where, where would be the best place for them to do that? Well, especially leading up to, um, when we do these episodes and it's rant, it's not like we have a fixed schedule for these, but like, I usually drop a line on like Twitter. I just did it on my Instagram story, which we got a lot of questions off that. Um, we do it in, uh, obviously the discord, there's a full time dedicated page, dedicated page. What if submissions where people mm. round the clock put them in there? We get a ton, some really good ones. But I mean, yeah, it's usually like just look out for a post when we're going to do it. It's like a comment yeah. below kind of thing cool. because it's a little too much. We do get a lot of people randomly messaging them to us, but dude, like we have like, yeah, I'm running like three social medias minimum, right? And you guys have all your own, and we're getting DM'd across all of these social medias. They get buried. It's like it's a little too hard. So the best thing to do to is keep your out. eye out on the Bledsoe said so socials. We'll put a post when we're getting ready for a what if, and you comment below or mine or my personal yeah. Ryan Bledsoe because I, you know, my wife usually runs the Bledsoe said so one, and I just, I hop on mine, and it has a little bit more of a following anyway. So I'm like mm -hmm. more people, more questions. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So all right, let's do it. What's that one? All say? right. So this one, uh, it doesn't have a name. Okay. Uh, it's just uh, unlisted. Uh, what if the giant ball of light the being showed Chris was the second sun orbiting our solar system? I just wrote that. I accidentally cut the name. Okay. I'm going to find it. Okay. I just wrote that down. One more time, if yeah, you okay. don't mind. Okay. What if the giant ball of light the being showed Chris was a second sun orbiting our solar system? The, that's the, a wild question. That's a really wild Feels question. like Star Wars. Yeah. Dharma oh my crumbs. God, he's too, about to start uh, referencing Star Wars every episode now. It's too fresh. We've like got to we get him off it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, from like the beginning. Did, yeah. So this is Dharma crumbs on Instagram. Thank you, Dharma crumbs. Thank you. For Thank, the you. Thank you. So I do I do want to um the original question said the ball, the giant ball of light the Hathor showed Chris. That's not quite how it mm. happened. It was the beings. It okay. was my dad didn't see the lady until 2012. Right. This was shown to him in in 2007. I've often wondered that, like, what is this thing? I mean, we've been talking about it since 2007 or more like 2008 when he had his regression and he and I have talked about it for many years. Like I remember when I was younger, do you remember when we were in high school and I got really into the Nibiru stuff? Cause everybody was oh, talking yeah. about 2012, yeah. <clears throat> 2012. And it was, it was everywhere in like, Kind of like underground mm -hmm. alien. Talking about the Anunnaki. Right, and, yeah. right. And I, I heard that from Chris for sure. He, yeah. He was very. And like, I don't buy that stuff anymore. I mean, yeah. it was it was natural that we would study that in the beginning because what material did we have out there to understand what we were going through? Mm -hmm. But like, they had this theory that there was a 10th planet that's in orbit. And I was like, well, what if it's that? But no, what I really think it is, is dad's like, it could be the sun. It could actually be the sun. And they're just showing him the sun, or it could be like, you know, these, these orbs are like different consciousnesses. You know, we, we know this, like the beings travel through the orbs and, and, and they've even indicated that when we die, our spirit goes into these orbs mm -hmm. and they go back to the spirit world. I often wondered what if that was some form of God-like consciousness? Like, you know, if there was some real 
energetic manifestation of a God force. That's, that's how I visualize it would be like, just like a big version of an orb. Yeah. Like, like a star. Because it's, mm-hmm. it's more, it's, it's more significant energy. Yeah. Yeah. And you've even talked about how like the sun is potentially like the kind of like father entity that, you know, other entities come from, or maybe it's scientifically the, it is right. You right. Know? Yeah. So, I mean, that would be, that would be pretty crazy if I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it, it I lean more towards them showing mm-hmm. him that as a representation of the sun to drive home its significance. That's what, that's what mm. dad's kind of thinking lately. Like it might actually just be the sun. They didn't say exactly what it was. Right. It was just a large, like golden, you know, yellowish, whatever sphere of light up in and space. I, I mean, the immediate human association with a giant yeah, golden yeah, yeah. sphere of light is the sun. Yeah. And there's also like countless other stories and other like UFO type um, encounters where they see like a portal mm. and there's an additional sky in the sky. Mm. Um, it, you know, what if it was that kind of situation too, where it was another portal to another sun type thing, uh-huh. like a different sun. So who said portal in the sun? My dad. Yeah. Neil Young. Neil Young, yeah, well, yeah. <clears throat> right, but the entities indicated to my dad that, that they they do travel through a portal in the sun. Yeah, they that there are some entities that come from there. So like, I think it's a realm. It's like yeah, like if if we if we at this point in evolution we are material. Be- we're part God, part physical, normal human. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're we're truly hybrids in the sense that like our mother and in my understanding of things, our mother is this material realm we're born in her womb. We're born in earth. We're, we're born through the water, but also water is mostly earth. And you know, you think about duality and yang, you have the material and the spiritual, you have the light and the dark doesn't necessarily mean the dark is evil. It's just like the absence of the light, light or yeah. illumination. I tend to think of it like we're part God in the sense that our mother is this physical world and we have a body that is physical, but then our father is the spiritual world too. And we have a soul that is spiritual and it's like, if we're ascending to next levels of consciousness throughout the aeons, it makes sense that we would go to another realm. Maybe that's where we go from here. When we all collectively awaken, it's like, poof, the next game is in that reality over there. That's mm-hmm. a big ball of light. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. you know, that's just kind of how I think about it. But No, I see that. I like we, that. We, it, you know, it, it, if the evolution of consciousness is true... We can't stay here in the material plane forever. Of yeah. course That's not. not how evolution works. It, it, it's too limiting. Right. It, it's too limited. Like we, like we were talking, you know, like our, our consciousness will outgrow our body. Right. You know? So we, we yeah, that, that is the logical conclusion. Like Akira, uh-huh. like the Jedi. Yes. Like so many other things in pop culture. It's like eventually, I think it's a metaphor for what actually happens to the collective human race. Like eventually we will grow past the need for being limited in a material body. Facts. Mm. Mm. Let's do another one. Heck yeah. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes, great question. Going back to What was the, the name again? Um, Dharma Crumbs. Thank you. Okay, this is a cool one. This is back to the Discord jar, and we are thanking Sean Davis, man. Sean Davis, man. Hey, Sean Davis has a sick metal band. Sick metal band. Let me, let me verify the name on that. I'm so bad Please. with names. But, uh, uh, thank you so much, Sean. Uh, keep on making that music. Abstract it's forms. Abstract forms. It's incredible. He writes cool, all man. the guitar for it. Yes. And it's a smash. That dude writes sick riffs. It's like our kind of mu- like genty metal, yeah. like heavier stuff. Love screamo it. type stuff. And this is a cool question. Question is, what if the universe is the result of energies or primordial entities communicating with one another. Like, what if this realm that we are in is a consequence of... Spoken word creating? Yes, like some sort of communication happening. Well, I mean, it's, it seems just naturally true. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, can't, I can't sit here and tell you I don't believe any of that. Yeah, because yeah. uh, what we talk about... An interesting thing that has for some reason been coming up a lot lately is when we talk with people about like, what are these entities? You know, I usually say like, well, think of like Buddhism. When you reach enlightenment, you become a little Buddha, which is like one of those little orbs or whatever. But then a lot of times people will be like, okay, well, what does that mean? The lady is 
Or what does that mean like some of these bigger, more significant entities are? They would be the primordial energies. That's what I'm the, saying. The, mm -hmm. the original mm -hmm. archetypal energies. It's like they... That we come from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's so hard to explain, but the way I see it is like, it's like a reflection of a concept in this realm. Like if, you know, the lady was a reflection of the concept of like love and compassion. Right. So that concept has always existed. Right. It, it had to have always existed from yeah. the very beginning and of time. And to add to this, now we're getting into Plato, how he had a whole theory called the theory of forms. And that was his theory. Mm. The, the form being truth, goodness, even numbers, love, those things that we know and we all agree mean something. Plato was like, well, no, they have a form in another reality. Well, dude, that they have a soul that is as real as you and me. That, that sounds like the Greek gods. That, that yeah. sounds like, like mythological gods. You think about it. In Greek mythology, every god is like the reason for something in the physical realm existing. Right. Yeah, they're yeah. just using, they're telling a story with them, but and you know, when you get down into it esoterically, they're just like primordial forces of nature. Exactly. Like the yeah. Egyptians. Yeah. And so yeah, I think in a cool, abstract way, I mean it's really hard to pin your mind down to that concept because it's so abstract. Yeah. But I think Sean, I think you're kind of hitting it right on the head. Like it I think that's what this realm inherently is, is those those primordial, ever present like energies communicating and this is the consequence of it all well it's like most major religions around the world have some sort of description in their texts this like first there was the word yeah. or like it's brahma saying om or and then in the bible it's like first there was the word and then there was or no, first i don't remember how it goes in john it's like the word and the word was god the word was with god it's always this symbolism of the God force speaking, but you know, to me that sounds like vibration and frequency. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it also sounds like uh, Skyrim, like shouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon shouts. meaning into something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But 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 that's a deeper question too, because it's like, are they kind of subtly hint? You think about Skyrim, it's like they have this ancient dragon language that only people with a certain level of development in their soul who have incarnated with a certain ability can speak and summon the power of this language. To me, it sounds like the twilight language, mm. which is the concept that there was an original language before the tower of Babel incident where we all had one language. Could I didn't have been, know it had a name. That's a it's cool called the name. twilight language. It's yeah. a really cool name. Yeah, it is. You know, and Art. some people are like, was it Latin? Was it Sanskrit? Was it, you know, they, right. they don't know, yeah. but that goes hard. Yeah. <laughs> good question, go Sean. Hard. That was a really good one. Ryan's turn. All right. We're pulling from the OG jar. I like switching back and forth. Yeah. yeah doing a regular yeah, one yeah, on Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah Picking baby. Picking up what you're putting down. Oh, this is a long one. Yeah. Sorry. Um, did you write in the purple pen? Sure did. So it's Twitter? Is that okay. the same guy? At, no. At okay. Sean. Let me try to read this correctly. At Sean Fazlet. Does that sound Something, right? It, it did have about that spelling. Fazlet? Yeah. <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> At Sean Fazlitt, what if time is happening simultaneously and the only difference is that different times are just vibrating a slightly different frequency? I'm guessing you put a period to abbreviate. Yes. A, a slightly different frequency. Ghosts are people in the past or future runs into hours. I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the timeline idea. Everything's running simultaneously. But to me, that also reads like, because um, obviously, you know, Abraham Lincoln is alive, but he's the most popular ghost ever. You know, <laughs> putting his boots on in the White House. I don't imagine he's still doing that. So I could see where that'd be like a timeline splice situation. If you view it like in a tree, it travels up the tree first and then it just stays, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. That's kind of how I imagine it. I visualized it that way. I think about it like, I think a really wonderful visual representation of this concept is, believe it or not, the Zack Snyder um, Justice League mm -hmm. okay. because it's the scene when the Flash is running through the Speed Force and there's this monologue going on in his head and while he's running through the Speed Force he's like rewriting reality and he says something to the I haven't seen it since it, the, the Snyder Cut came out years ago but it was something to the effect of like you know you can change the past you can change the future be here now mm. you know and, and like 
it didn't go into much more description than that, but I thought it was cool how it was like he was changing how he viewed the past. He was changing the outcome he wanted for the future, but he was focused on being here right now and making the right choice and the karmic consequences unfolding to alter the future. Mm. But then the other symbolism, which is a little bit more ancient, that makes me like really think deeply about this concept is Odin and his ravens because they represent thought, which is the future, mm. Mm. and memory, which is the past. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's some sort of, you can crack the door, Alex. My cat's going nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dee. Come, Come on, on in, baby. She wants to join. She loves joining the podcast. Yeah, and you know what? If you even think about it from a scientific perspective, a lot of scientists describe um, time as like this spaghetti ball. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Not it's, like, it's like a Spider Man. It's yeah. a locus. Perfect. It's a locus of reality. And, and my, this is just my interpretation. We are always presently experiencing a locus of reality where truly the only thing that's real is right now. Because, dude, I mean, not to toot my own horn. I, I'm just like, I'm literally turning 30 in two days, you know? And it's a weird feeling, like turning 30, crossing this hump. And I'm thinking a lot about the past. Mm. You know what I mean? Entering a new decade. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm like so ready. But it's like nothing that happened to me in the past is real. Right. Or, or you or anyone. Because like what's only real is happening now. And like I'm finding myself... Altering now, especially with the release of Beyond Skinwalker Ranch, the mm. finale, I'm finding myself internally witnessing a change in how I even react to events that unfolded in my past. Whereas I used to be so depressed and, and suppressed and, I mean, you know, suffering and all this and all that that I've talked about a million times. Now I find myself just smiling. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like you truly can change the past. Yeah. But it happens now. And it happens with your perspective. And changing the future is so much easier. Oh, yeah. You know, because all you got to do you're, is just stop worrying. You're in yeah. control of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's that's ancient, ancient wisdom. Right. Like, like gurus and, and like they teach the only thing that exists is right now. Right now. You, yeah. You have no clue what's going to happen two seconds from now. And things that happened two seconds ago aren't happening right now. They, they, they don't exist anymore. The only thing that exists is literally the fraction of a second that you are constantly experiencing. Right now. Yes. I think about and it like now. I think <laughs> about it like the ultimate God consciousness is like this just omniscient being truly omniscient, meaning every every speck that's like a little piece of dust on the little you know, back flab of every atom that gets up and goes to work every day to like mingle with other electrons and protons. You see what I'm saying? Like, kind of. Kind of. Like, <laughs> like, you know, a atoms are, they, they're, they're like us. They, they have jobs and, and, sure, and yeah. cells and, fill a purpose. you know, they're, they're like, they're like conscious beings in yeah, some yeah, level. Yeah. I'm, I'm being facetious. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. They are. You know, I, I feel like the God consciousness is, is through every single particle of reality, through every sub particle is observing every event. But it's like, there's this camera rolling. That's like the live feed is recording everything that's presently happening now. And like, we're the dummies, not, it's actually brilliant that we do this. We're the one writing all this stuff down <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. a thousand years yeah, ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? What you're describing like, is, Awareness, right? Yes, yeah. that's what awareness I'm trying is to get at. Right now, awareness at all times. is only ever, always, right now, and yes. we're so stuck on everything back then. And it's like, oh, dude, I didn't study for my test tomorrow. Like, <laughs> I'm freaking out. I'm freaking but out. You did? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I studied yeah. the morning of. Yeah. yeah but, oh, I just stayed up. But I'm just saying, like, we we <laughs> I just didn't study. <laughs> we observe. Yeah. We observe this past and future thing. Right. Yeah. You know, it's so. exclusive to us. Right. It's, mm. it's exclusively like a human experience. Yeah. I don't even know that m most animals do do that. I mean, they have they have memories for of sure. Course. They experience trauma the same way, but in a right. they they handle it better than we do. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, we won't like if we get hit, it'll traumatize us for twenty years. But at a certain point, animals will get they'll get conditioned, mm -hmm. but they'll like. They'll grow yeah, dude, in a better, goldfish more profound have a, way. Have a seven-second memory. A goldfish literally forgets everything every seven seconds. Well, yeah. Like, we should be like goldfish. There's some Ted well, Lasso. <laughs> some Ted Lasso stuff. Wait, we have to acknowledge the past to move forward, too, though. You, you can acknowledge it without attaching any emotion to it. That, I, think sure. that, I think that is the significant thing. Because uh, may, uh, oftentimes, it is 
vital to acknowledge the past, especially like... You have like, to grow. You have to grow, especially like mistakes you've made yeah. or things you wish to grow from. Like, it's not always a bad thing to look back or, or even look forward, but you just have to approach it with a level of detachment. And peace. What really matters peace. is now. Exactly. Enjoy now. Yeah. And really. if you have to transmute your past yeah. in order to enjoy now, then handle that accordingly with no attachment to it. Just know yeah. that right now you're different. Every second of every day you are different than you've ever been. When you improve yourself now, the past and the future improve as well. Like it's, mm. it's, it's That's weird. It's like, it. it's like the thing that truly matters the most is just every day waking up and, and just trying to be better. When I say be better, it's like, you know, try to be nicer, try to be kinder. More compassionate. More compassionate. And, 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 and the way that that relates. Eat healthier. Yeah. The way know? that, re- like, compassion, for instance, I think it's one of the most important things in existence. And when you work on yourself in the current and allow yourself to be more compassionate, you will treat your past experiences with compassion. Yeah. And potentially yeah. heal from those things, ideally, you know. Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you hold on to baggage from mistakes you made or from ways that you acted or whatever, but then if you learn compassion today, that has the potential to heal and forgive yourself for things that happened in the past. And so I love, you- I love the way that you put it, like focusing on yourself now, healing yourself now heals your past and future self. Right. That, that's, that's what's working for me. Yeah, you know, no, it, me too. Like, that's facts. That's also all you can do. Yeah. Yeah, facts. Yeah, Pretty much. For sure. You want to hit us with another Star Wars reference, Alex? <laughs> well, Search your feelings. It, if it hits me. Yeah. yeah. All right, I will uh, not hold back. Yeah. Lee's going to do another. Do patron. Yeah. Patreon submission. All right. So we this one. Card. This one's uh, by K4-2D. Oh, Kyle. No, Kyle. no, no, no. Shout out, Kyle. I can't believe it actually got pulled, too. No. What if Nick really is better looking than Alex now? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, that's just too bad okay, hold on. He is. Oh, uh, no. What no, if? No, no, no. That's no, a big no, what no. if. Quick cover I, your face. I want... <laughs> Kyle, yes. I want to make yes, this... Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I want to make this very clear. I was the one that was doing the Discord submissions, and I read that and was like, ha-ha, and Ryan and Alex forced me basically to at write gunpoint. It. But you know why? Why? Because I wanted to have a moment to talk about how amazing the people are in the Discord and, and they just like <laughs> ha, and and there's inside jokes brewing in there and it's like I felt like that had to be read on the Also show. like why how often do you get to give yourself a pedestal? How often do you get to think about yourself positively? Well, I I think about myself positively all the time these days. I'm very compassionate towards myself. But like externally, like that feels so icky to me. Yeah, like, I was like, I, I don't want to write that. I don't want us <laughs> to talk about this on the show. And now we're doing it. Embrace the dark side. Yeah, Nick. embrace it. it. Do it. He hasn't seen that yet. Do it. Oh. Do it. I've seen the Do memes. It. Don't yeah. worry. Okay. Do Nick, it. it feels great. Just let it happen. Yeah. yeah. And for the record, it's not true. Alex is the hot. Alex is the heartthrob of the show, and he always will be. Look, okay? just because you can't change the narrative doesn't mean you can't support additional claims that's kind of like this is well, what see, you're I'm describing is already it's in the box can't you consider getting out of it <laughs> yeah shut up dude whatever <laughs> i'm seeding the narrative let's move yeah. on to the next one already okay, okay real question real question ryan's well, okay, trying to seed I, the narrative yeah, so it gets to too, him right. next what'd you say <laughs> ryan's seeding the narrative so it gets to him next it's another, it's another <laughs> that's your one. real motive that's your real motive he wants to be recognized where am i at man <laughs> and where am i am i on the bottom kyle time no, for another I'm, what if no you're not on the bottom <laughs> all right so this one's by cliff um this is another patron um, what if clip. death is how our minds fold back into the consciousness of the universe? I mean, that just seems like the natural order. Cliff's been on the show, by the way. Yeah, yeah. 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 Love Cliff. Thanks for the submission. Mm-hmm. What if death is how we fold back into the consciousness of the universe? I mean, it's like, it, it makes sense to me. It's like, again, yeah, it just seems like the answer. The, the, yeah. The beings told my dad when we die we become as they are we go into an orb and we return to the eternal world is what they called it mm-hmm. they didn't say the spirit world they call it the eternal world but i think that the i th- i i have noticed that the entities have very carefully chosen language that has a universal meaning that's not polarizing 
You know it's what I mean? It's also not, it's not like spirit world. There's, you could d- attach fear to it. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're a spirit and when you die, your spirit passes on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could totally see that being scary to any, like to someone like, you know, it could be scary. In the eternal world, the, there's just no. That sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, it sounds positive. <laughs> it it sounds like you it can't does. avoid. You know, the, I, I heard something from, I think it, I think it might've been Joe Rogan, but uh, yeah. he was talking about DMT. And he like he had read somewhere that there's this theory that potentially DMT is like the chemical that allows the wherever the consciousness or the soul is being stored, it allows it a path. The portal opens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. allows the portal to, to open. that realm to to reemerge with that consciousness, and so like consuming it in our like you know, while we're still alive, it gives us potentially like a glimpse into that realm. But like death would be like the big glimpse. And like you're, you really fully take that path, no turning back Mm -hmm. and you shoot off into that other realm, you know, which would be the, the collective consciousness. I've got a question for you guys. Yeah. All of you. Okay. Yeah. Is the fact that this existence that is, is the fact that this existence will come to an end scarier than the thought of eternity? For me, yes. Uh, okay, so you're saying for you, you're, you're more afraid that life is finite or you're more afraid that it's forever? Well, I'm enjoying life. Uh-huh. I'm trying to enjoy life, you know, yeah. as much as everyone can. Mm. And, um, you know, sometimes you feel like you're late to that. And yeah. right now I'm, I'm starting to release some of that um, you know, not so much enjoyment. I'm trying to like really move forward into enjoying life, mm. and I feel like I'm a little late. So I, it's a little spooky. Mm-hmm. But like when I'm 70, I'm not gonna care. <laughs> totally. Like honestly, like. And, and full disclosure, like for probably the majority of my life, I felt the same way. Yeah. Like I like life. Life is dope. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, and you know, I would say I was also kind of late to the game with mm-hmm. like fully embracing and enjoying life, and like in in a healthy, positive way. Yeah. Um, but you know what, man, I have had more comfort with these like esoteric concepts and these mystical descriptions of death and the afterlife. I have found infinitely more comfort in these few years that I've been studying that than I ever got from Christianity. It's because I was you, thinking the same thing. It's because you feel it to be true. I do. You know it, it to be true. Right. The truth <laughs> so many resonates. Star Wars references. <laughs> yeah. The truth resonates. It really does. Yeah. And, and and once I like just started exclusively following my intuition, like I, I feel like I have a really good meter for the things that like ring true with me. Like I it's like I've honed it to where almost I almost immediately I have a feeling like that's true. That's not true. That's how it is. That's not how it is. But like, you know, to me, the like exoteric description of like death in the afterlife was always, what's the best word? Incomplete. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Scary. Illogical. Very yeah. scary. It didn't make, it, it, it didn't make sense to it me. It did either. not make sense. I've, I always felt a little bit confused and that's why I like, I, I was a practicing Christian. I, I, there's still, yeah. I definitely, I, We'll preface. Let's make it very clear really quick that yeah, Lee yeah. and I went to the same church. Yeah, yeah. So whatever conditions I was raised under, him too. I respect a lot of the ideas. A lot of it, yeah. there, I mean, every, I think everywhere, every religion, no matter what it is, it there's has good. It has it. good, yeah. Absolutely. Otherwise people wouldn't still be Exactly, it, and they wouldn't be so widespread. Yeah. There, there's so, wisdom in all traditions. Yeah. yeah. So I, I kind of, I totally, I relate with that for sure. It yeah. definitely feels... Um, cause you can take anything you want with you from any like belief system. So I, I kind of, yeah, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like and that's one of the major problems I have with like organized religion and eso- or exoteric religion is that m- most of them say like, all right, so you're reading this book, which means like you have to take every single word as truth. And you can't pick the things that you like and go to other places and find other things you like. It's just this. It's just this yeah, one thing. Yeah, it's the secrets yeah. of the whole universe, dude. Yeah. It, it, you know, according to that religion. Exa- you got to stay in this box. And it's like, well, I mean, well, what if I read the Bhagavad Gita 
And a lot of that resonates with me. And I feel like a lot of that's true is like, am I bad for that? You know what I I mean? Yeah. I think the the core problem is you never feel comfortable to ask questions. Yeah. And And if you ask questions, you just sound dismissive. I think that's where a lot of our like shared trauma comes from. We can't, we're not allowed to ask because it's, um, it's usually brought with like, um, negative response. Oh yeah. Like you're not trusting it well enough. Yeah. You don't have enough faith into it if you have questions to ask. Yeah. You yeah. shouldn't even be thinking that. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. But like, especially with the way, I mean, we were all Christian here. Me and Lee went to the same church. You you went, it wasn't our church, but it's still a Christian I church. I've been to church a few times. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> uh, uh, the point is the, the belief is inherently the same. The book yeah. is the same. Yeah. The book. All these different groups just have different ideas about it. But like, even as a kid, I would sit there and th- I wouldn't ask this. You know what I mean? Because we know better. Yeah. But I would think like, well, what about the kid in Africa? Or, 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 you know, the Sahara Desert this or, always comes or the up. Amazon exactly who, who never heard about Christ. Like, is he going to go to hell forever? Typically, that- the response I would get, and I didn't ask this question, too afraid, but I've had people <laughs> ask around that question. And typically, it's one of those like, well, they should know or they should intuitively understand that they, are, they come from something above. And um, that's very flawed. It was yeah. always. I was always told by people like the same thing always, yeah. which is that they should know. Which is that well, no, I was actually told by like everyone growing up that every soul on this planet will at some point hear be, about it, hear about it, Me and too. be introduced yeah. to the concept. That's of the Christ. answer. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, what about a nine month old baby who dies of cancer? Well, like, they right, actually right. what? Actually, they do. There's a point where the innocence is broken. Mm-hmm. This is what I've always been told and understood it when yeah. I was. They're like, it's around eight. Yeah, yeah. Eight. The innocence gets broken. <laughs> that's when they're sinful. You know, it's weird. That's but we're born into sin. I thought we were that's born That's Catholic. Into yeah. That's Catholic. But like, if like, it, you know, if you have a miscarriage. Yeah. They don't go to hell. Because mm-hmm. obviously they can't But repent. according to Catholics. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. I yes. The Catholic that. ritual and belief system is like, you are literally born in a sinful state and you must be saved through baptism I mean, and they all also the sacred rites. That, like defecating is sinful. It's pure evil. <laughs> That's Judaism. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. They, have well, a prayer, they have a prayer about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm ignorant. <laughs> it yeah. might be Catholic. Yeah. So on the, no, it's not. But on the, on the Catholic side, you're literally baptized as a, a baby, baby child. Mm-hmm. Right. And True. Uh-huh. Then to save it's you. your responsibility to go to confession every time you sin or every, every on a weekly basis. And so you're, you're forgiven of your original sin, which is what you were born with at <laughs> baptism. And then it's on you from that point to absolve your own sins. Doesn't that suck, bro? Like that you, sucks. Your soul is born Dude. dirty and evil. So yeah. I went according yeah. to that. Yeah. You guys know this, but I went to Catholic school. So mm. K yeah. through five. I'm in, I'm in Catholic school learning Catholicism, you know, whatever. But I remember we would go on a monthly or bi-monthly basis and sit in the hallway and go one by one into the, 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 um, Priest's office. Oh. Yeah. And have confession. But it wasn't like behind a screen. It was just as I'm sitting here looking at you guys. That's You're not sitting good. there looking at the priest. <laughs> and I'm going, Yeah, I talk back to my mom and Ugh. I hit my brother. And I paused certain scenes in Animal House. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just just watched Animal House for the first time. This I know year. you just talked about it the other day. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't get the a pause. Jessica Simpson music video. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Back in the days when we had VHS tapes, yeah. it's like pause. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. Yeah. Oops. Your dad yeah, walks in. Yeah. That's actually the first um, technology that I think I learned how to interface with. So VHS. Nice. Uh, if I may ask, um, does Catholicism have things with miscarriage? Is there know. is there any? I, I I wouldn't know. I didn't look into it. Okay. It's, that's <laughs> that's not what they taught I'm us in fifth about grade. That. Yeah. But yeah, no, my, my general point too is like, yeah, I, I never thought it made sense. And also like when you get into the biblical description of life after death, like no cap, it's just very confusing. It's like, okay, so there's one reference by Jesus that just talks about a place that's uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, so what's he talking about? I don't know. And then there's a future part written by somebody who's not Jesus and was written many decades after he died. And it was like, you'll go to a lake of fire and burn and eternal torment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but then there's also a part in like either Thessalonians or Revelations that's like, 
when you're dead, you lay in your grave until the final judgment day, which is like experienced by the collective. So all the trillions of souls that have died before us, their ghost is supposedly just Waiting. laying asleep in the grave. But Jesus also Dang. went to get the keys to heaven in his three days. So no, according, uh, supposedly Jesus went to hell for three days. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. yeah. yeah, he, yeah. Went, he went to hell to get the keys. But from that's the not devil. in the book. That's just part of the doctrine. What? It's not in the book. Yeah, oh. bro. I mean, it's there's, like, there's all these ideas that spin around and it's like, which, well, well, which one is it? Yeah. You know, it's like, do you go to heaven when you die? Like a lot of people I'd, believe, or is, is it like the book? Hearsay? A lot of it's hearsay. And then there's, there's the, a lot of it's hearsay fluffed up like this because of a line that'll be like, yeah, you know, okay. the, the soul sleep until the final day when, when, when this, you know, you rise from the grave at that final judgment and we're all standing in the clouds. But so it's like, what? I don't. None of this gives me comfort. No. You go to, you you ask your pastor. <laughs> it's not supposed to. Not none of them have the same answer. No, never. Some and will tell you there's the one judgment. Some will tell you, well, they're waiting on you in heaven. I don't know. Yeah, Ac- according to that. Mm-hmm. It's like, are they looking down on me or are they waiting? And that's the other thing. They're like, you're supposed to believe every word. So right. It's like, right, how yeah. am I supposed to but believe? But every it? pastor tells a different part of it. So how it's, am I supposed to believe every it, word? And then it's up to the congregation to identify with that. Yeah. specific pastor's this description. Is, this is why it's important to to just trust the things that resonate with you. Like, to, you know what I mean? Like, I know that these, like, pastors and deacons and people, they're like, you have to believe every word and whatever, but if you actually sat down and read the Bible, like, you would realize there's a lot of contradiction. I believe that the Bible is loosely following real historical events that have happened. Like I, I believe, a, uh, like most of this stuff happened at some point in human history, but the the system that published it and is like we are the ones who are you know dictating what this means and right. how you should believe have kind of like fluffed it up to be like this one true control system. I don't think the Bible is untrue. I want to clarify that. I just think it's like, you know, look at it as events that have happened, but it's like, there's so much more to the mysteries of consciousness and life after death and the soul. And it's like, bro, it's like the only reason people worship Jesus like a God anymore, or, you know, still to this day, Jesus was literally like, you know, don't worship me. I'm not God. People are falling in front of his face. Don't worship me. Like, no, you don't, don't take a rabbi. Don't take a master. Like, just, just live like me to see the face of God. And then there's a scripture, I think written by the apostle Paul, which there's controversy behind him. And it's like, the only way you can get to heaven is if you say out loud with your mouth that you believe and that you confess that he did this and this and this and this and this, and then this and this and this and this and this happened, and then he did this and this and this and this and this. That's the only way, according to that, that you can you yeah. can make it in the afterlife. It's like, well, wait a minute, but Jesus said something different. But then also the commandments you have to follow as well separately. Well, Jesus said those are done. The, the only two commandments now is love your neighbor, treat them as you would treat yourself, and love God. But I think that's as above, so below. Like we, yeah. all, we all are. God. It's like love both, but it's like, you know, inwardly respect your divinity, but also respect the divinity of everything around you. My big takeaway, I don't, I don't hate Christianity. I want to make that very clear. Yeah. I love, I love Christ. I love the wisdom. I just think that we're moving forward into a, a, a new way of thinking. That's like, there is wisdom in all of these systems. Yeah. You know, I agree. Let, let's find the, let's find the, the center of the, the Venn diagram. collection of it all. Yeah. yeah where, where it all, Meets. What's the center of the Venn diagram called? The Pisces. Vesica, the Vesica, Pisces. The Vesica, yeah, the Vesica Piscis. Vesica Piscis. Call back. Yeah. Vesica Piscis. All yeah, right. great question. Thanks, Cliff. That was a good one. All right, let's do another Nikki. one. Here we go. Y'all ready for this? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> All right, we got Joe Z1966. There we go. Thank you, Joe Z. What if gods throughout history are advanced, are an advanced civilization in our galactic neighborhood who are quote unquote playing God? Yeah, that's like ancient aliens, you know. Like, <laughs> it's kind of fun though. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting question, but I just I don't I don't I don't buy it. That's kind of what the people who are currently talking about, like the whole Nibiru, Anunnaki, that kind of stuff. Like, I think the theory is that those Anunnaki were like some 
ancient godlike race who like kind of planted us here for whatever reason to like mine gold or something like yeah, some weird be slaves and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. then they would come back and and take us back and whatever. It's uh, like Scientology. It is. Yeah, it is. In a way, yeah. I guess the, yeah, if you thought of it that way. I mean, there's this like really specific with the way like souls are planted here mm -hmm. and then grow us. It's kind of how Scientology is believed. Oh, is that right? Yeah, like they the it's kind of like a fraction of like a thing gets split and then planted and seeded here huh. and then we grew from huh. that. And well, you realize kind of like the Titans. Well, <laughs> no, more kind of like the esoteric truth, but they're poisoning it with like an alien invasion. Yeah, yeah, scam yeah. Very on yeah. the story. With yeah. coming but back what you just described, years. you literally, you literally just described. It's kind of like they believe we're a fraction of a thing that was planted here and then we grew. It, yeah, it's it's what that is true. Yeah. You know but what I mean? But it's more literal, I think. I think the souls are literal, like Pikmin. <laughs> <laughs> pluck, 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 Let's do a Pikmin episode. <laughs> I'd love to. Esoteric Pikmin. But, you know, when this kind of, when that kind of thing comes up, like the we're a fraction of a thing mm -hmm. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. I always point back to scientific principles. This is why we got to do that spirit science series, because, like, mm -hmm. I'm always on it with that kind of stuff. Think about it. A fundamental principle of science is energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can't. Yeah. Be, it can only break off and pew, 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 change. Change. It can it only can, transform exactly. and evolve, or, or or break off and split up and and do so. Like that. That's one of the reasons why that resonates with me as true, because like that makes sense. Even scientifically, yeah. it makes sense. If there was some big ball of consciousness in the sky before everything else existed, and it was just like, all right, well, this is boring. I'm going to start breaking off pieces of myself and, and then we'll, you know, then we can make meaning out of all of this. That makes sense well, to me. Okay. I'm not going to say who told me this, but I'm going to talk about something. I want to stress that I am not endorsing the Mormon religion. However, just like we talk about, there is some wisdom in everything. Mm -hmm. And I just had a pretty deep chat um, with, with, with some, some friends who, who are pretty in their past were very involved with Mormonism and like even, you know, having family members who are prominent figures in the Mormon church locally, like kind of like head honcho types higher up in it. And also like one of them was a missionary and, and, and they might, they might be fine if I say, I just figure like, why not, you know, keep them anonymous. They were explaining to me that the truth behind the Mormon belief is they actually believe that there was an original God consciousness. And I'm like, you know, like, <laughs> Okay, keep going. <laughs> yes. Keep going, please. Yes. <laughs> yes, true, true. That's facts, that's facts. Just <laughs> keep going, going. <laughs> keep going. And they're like, there's this original God consciousness. It's like the original light. But in their view, the cosmology of the universe and how this is all playing out, um, that original light or that original God consciousness is, 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 is perfect, yet is seeking to evolve even further beyond perfection. So it's like, how does it do this? It does it through us as fractions of this infinite God consciousness. So it just like every, you know, the Gnostic myth, the hermeticism, all this, all this wisdom and, 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 you know, all this journey of the soul, everything we're talking about awakening the age of Aquarius, the evolution of consciousness. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to call this, system but it's it's obviously real new you know? age Re well, whatever you want whatever the yeah. wisdom the truth yeah the mormons even teach it <laughs> secretly and it's like it, it goes so far as to say that our souls are on the microcosm experiencing this evolution to higher infinities because as we are all evolving into higher light beings then the over soul or the over God mind is perfecting itself through our perfection. Well, uh, that just makes perfect sense to me because how else is it supposed to evolve? Right. If it's just, if a big ball of consciousness. Divide and conquer. Right. If it's just up in the sky in the middle of the gray void of nothingness, how is it going to grow and evolve and learn? And like, I don't remember who said it. Maybe. Oh yeah. I think it was, um, it was Cece. Yeah. Shout out, shout out Cece. Cece. You, you don't learn in heaven. You know, she yeah. said, you don't learn in heaven. Yeah. Pain is the portal. Pain is the portal. So like you have to create an experience that is capable of showing duality and, and a spectrum of things, 
without everything just being gray in order to actually be able to understand the universe. You, you can't understand anything in a vacuum, a void where there's nothing. Just a big blob of gray space. Like, <laughs> you have to create an experience that allows you to grow. So break yourself into billions of little pieces, create some little simulation soul video game. Yeah, or and, VR headset or whatever. And learn yeah. that way. I couldn't figure out how to move the body. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know how to work the body. I'm crossed up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great one. Uh, fantastic. Let's do another one. Ryan's going to pull oh, from the Patreon, Patreon jar, jar right, now right, this right, time, right. y'all. Come on now. Patreon.com slash Blaze. I really like the what if questions because they're very fun. They are Mm -hmm. fun. What if is always fun. Here we go. We got Jory B. Jory B. What if people we deem psychic are really just people who produce more DMT than the average person? I think that, okay, that is a very, (laughs) that's very interesting question. But I have to say, bro, I mean, my dad just, uh, did the whole Beyond Skinwalker Ranch experiment, and they kind of just, like, proved the answer to this puzzle is the Theta Wave state. Yeah. 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 It's got to be. That when you first started reading the question, I was thinking, like, I don't know about DMT, but I wonder what is the thing in our human bodies that would relate most directly to psychic abilities? And then I immediately thought, like, oh, it's Theta Waves. We just figured that out. Yeah. Like, they did brain scans on Chris, and while he was doing psychic shit, it was like Theta Waves going crazy. Yeah. So, like, if there is something in our brains that is causing that stuff to happen, seems like there's a good chance it's Theta Waves. If Hold you, up. What, what? Analysis revealed the DMT significantly altered electrical activity in the brain characterized by a marked drop-off in alpha waves. The human's brain dominant electrical rhythm when, when awake. They also found a short-lived increase in brain waves typically associated with dreaming, namely theta waves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so I was going to spin it with that creativity. Was hot. What if instead your, it influences your creativity? What does? DMT? Like if... if you would have more DMT in your head. It influenced. If it so, was more, it make you more. Hold, hold on a minute. Can can you break down what you just read? Yeah, that was to a me? lot. Like like explain so, it. Like I'm like basically <laughs> when using DMT, there was a short lived spike in theta waves. True. True. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying to you. Okay, that's essentially okay. what. So he's there's saying. a connection, contrary yeah, so. to your everyday alpha waves. So it's, okay. it seems like both are potentially true. It's wow. like. DMT. So what they're saying is, um, put him on the EEG, but also have him hit DMT, DMT, DMT at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, it sounds like the actual source of the psychic abilities is the theta waves, but increased levels of DMT increase the theta waves. Yeah, because I mean, they couldn't tell if there was increased levels of DMT with just yeah, a brain scan. That's like a that's like a chemical, chemical thing. thing. You know, like they'd right. have to be taking blood samples and stuff. Right. I mean, so that, that would be interesting. I think the answer is still theta waves. But DMT, like, spikes the theta waves like crazy. Wow. So I don't know if DMT is the source, but DMT could be seen as, like, a catalyst. I would love to see that EEG, though. I think that, I, I joked about it. I think I would love to see that. That seems interesting. Oh, there's somewhere. You, because you think in, that in someone the, has done that? In the documentary on Netflix, they were talking about when they did clinical trials in the hospital, they had everybody hooked up to everything. Oh. So they have some sort of there's data, data on a DMT trip. Okay, we got some research to do. I want to see that. Yeah. That would be... I mean, Show me the money! <laughs> yeah. Like, after seeing the scans, like, the live scans with your dad, now I'm like, now I'm, like, hungry for more of that kind of data. Yeah. yeah. So, if we take <laughs> what we've too. learned... When you die and you get dumped with DMT and your portal opens, you would also be getting dumped with theta waves. Well, dude, listen, yeah. look, like to me, it just Maybe. makes so much sense. It's obviously true. It's proven to be true now. The Monroe Institute, their whole shtick is their, their, their specially engineered frequencies to like hack your brain into theta. I'm telling you, we've been talking about that since like the third episode. I'm pretty sure Oh yeah, we started talking about that in the Matrix, Matrix episode, yeah. if I recall. And it's like, we've been on this, but I, I feel so just like, but now you've been proven thank right. you God. It, it, it was shown on TV. Yeah, yeah. But like, it makes sense because typically the theta wave state is never experienced while you're awake. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like it is a state that has to be accessed through some sort of 
meditation or frequency or whatever. Theta is the state that the brain produces when you are dreaming. What would happen if you are in this state while you were awake? Mm-hmm. It makes sense that yeah. the brain would mm-hmm. be doing weird spooky things, spiritual spooky things. Yeah. It just makes sense. It makes me think like what we think of as being awake is really being asleep. Yeah. It's very abstract. And, dude, and then when we're asleep, that's when we actually wake up. This is what the Gnostics teach. Like I, I, I went th- for a while studying. I got into Rosicrucianism and I was like, ah, I don't want to like pay for the membership for this. I'd rather just read stuff online. And then I started studying the Gnostic method, reading, you know, her, hermetic, um, her, hermetic text. But like, I, I really just want to like devour wisdom, tradition, knowledge. And I'm telling you, dude, like the Gnostic stuff, it is exclusively about developing the consciousness to a level where you are dream walking. Yeah, that's yeah, the whole yeah. point. The ancient Egyptians. Last night we had blue lotus flower tea. We, <laughs> we actually did that. Like we had hey. blue lotus flower tea. Hey guys, I had dreams. It was pretty fun. Nasty. It was disgusting. I did not lose a dream, but they were vivid. Yeah, I also yeah, don't yeah. remember them, but I remember the feelings of them. You thought it was nasty? Yeah, it, it was, was vile. vile. Well, we made it very <laughs> potent. Yeah, it was. Hey, I definitely Alex, uh, cranked it. We took mugs. And filled the mugs halfway with leaves. <laughs> Three different so, mugs. But no, so it tasted just like plant matter. Uh, it tasted it like tar. It didn't taste it like a tea. Yeah, it was very numbing. It the tingled tongue. in an uncomfortable way. Uh, it turned milk gray, if you were curious. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was with the milk and the honey. And oh, like, like a nice milk steak pr- color? Pr- ew. Yes, yes, <laughs> actually. Ew, yes, ew, a milk steak. Ew, 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 but ew. the reason I bring up Probably the blue just lotus vile. is because in ancient Egypt, they had rituals that were seen as sacred. The blue lotus grew only on the Nile River, is, is, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And it was revered as like the sacred plant of Amun-Ra. Like the ancient Egyptians, they would consume, the, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they did it in tea, Maybe they knew how to smoke it. I think it. they did do tea. I, I don't know if they and knew how to smoke it or anything like that. Too. But it's not a psychoactive like mushrooms or acid or anything like that. It's just a it's a plant with mild psychoactive properties. You don't trip. You don't get altered. But it supposedly allows you to lose a dream. And um, the point is, they would do these rituals where they would consume blue lotus flower in a, in a you know in a ceremony, and then they would dream walk. Yeah. And I actually saw a TikTok about it this morning talking about like there's an Egyptian book of dreams where it was all about awakening to a level to consciously dream walk. Whoa. You find this significant symbolism in these ancient wisdom traditions, the Gnostics, the Egyptians, the Hermetics. It's all about awakening your consciousness to a level where even in the dream world you are aware because they believe that you could, you could, uh, like say, like Edgar Casey did, like go view the Akashic records mm. or create some sort of construct in your dreams of like the psychic temple of knowledge and gain answers and information. You mm. know what I mean? You create yeah. constructs in your dreams. It's like, it's cool stuff. So you don't like multiverse of madness. <laughs> I didn't like, I, I, I did. There were some the things premise. about the movie. I didn't it's the like the whole premise. Yeah. I, I like the premise. It goes like, yeah. I very, is really fun. I very recently watched that for the first time, like within the past few months, and I liked it. I think it's really fun. Yeah, it wasn't if you the best take movie it too ever. seriously, it you're. I think you will. But it's because, a Sam Raimi movie. Yeah, it's campy. Right. It is like the tunnel scene. Right. Yeah. yeah it's so goofy, it's, but it's good. But it's, it's about fun. dreamwalking, and it's yeah, it's about dreamwalking. Yeah. And then like some people hated like the Mozart Beethoven. I thought I thought that was cool. Fun. I love that. That was cool. I, I thought, thought that was, cool. was so that was cool. Sick. It's one of the most cool. unique fight scenes in a Marvel movie period. I just yeah. didn't like the writing. I didn't. I didn't like you know a lot of the premise relies on things you don't expect to be true like wandavision ending the way it did mm-hmm. which i haven't seen only hearsay so oh, i'm really talking i, I, I want to watch great it. show i know great um, show. but kn- knowing how it ends and then wanda does that yeah doesn't really add up well what happened there was you had one director making this one director making that and, and one of them refused like, well, she to gonna watch be evil it. in my movie yeah that he wasn't refused some... to watch wandavision he didn't watch it Right. He didn't see the source material there, at there all. Was, there was no coordination or any bigger plan here. There's no yeah. continuity. Right, right. It's, which is like... That, that died a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. it did. Yeah. I think we're in a dark age of Marvel Superhero movies. Superhero movies. I, it's, yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, it kind of okay. needed th- to happen. It, yeah. It's a little sad. I think everyone's a little sick of it. Oh, yeah. Just the slightest I bit. Mean, dude. I'll de- I mean, Invincible's good. I'm, well, I, the, we can sing praises to all the good ones that are still coming out. 
It's good that Marvel's passing away though. Yeah, a passing bit. away. <laughs> yeah, it, I do love Spider Man. I could never. Oh yeah. I I could never. Those are always fire. Yeah. Always, they, always, always. Fire. If you give a studio the room to breathe, they'll make something great. Mm-hmm. And that's we saw that with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I loved that. I, I thought that was sick. But I mean, yeah, Invincible. Oh my! It comes yeah. out in a couple months. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I can't Robert remember. Kirkman, The Walking Dead. What? I haven't watched that in such a long time. He wrote the original comic for that too. He wrote Invincible. Yeah. The same guy. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Same that's guy. Why, that's why it's good. I Even had, in The Walking really Dead, good. there's a scene where some of the kids are playing little Invincible toys. I had no clue. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. All right, boys, we did it. Yep. We did it. <laughs> we did it. That's awesome. it. Thanks, yeah, Lee. Great question. For All of them are great questions. Yeah. Make sure you tune in next week, and we're going to do a deep dive with this boy right here. We're yes, gonna have a that's nice, me, baby. Yeah, we're going to have a nice, fun episode yeah. with the yeah. boy Lee. Awesome. Well, let's you know go. what to do. You ready? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Bye. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, check out our other videos. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Peace. Peace.